it's Jen and it is a Friday. I'm not sure which one. Obviously recording this as I can't be live with you. I'm still recovering from my surgery but I hope to be live soon. What I want to show you today is something new from the online exclusives. It's called Flowering Zinnias a designer series paper. Now there's a whole suite but I've just got the designer series paper here to show you. Actually I'll just show you this too. This is part of the online exclusive. That means it's just not in any other catalogs started March 5th and there's a whole suite here called flowering zinnias and there's lots of other stuff too there's a post on my website you can check it out to see all the other um, online exclusives but I just thought this paper was so beautiful so let me show it to you and then I'm going to make a bunch of cards with this so so there's one there's that beautiful pattern and I'll flip them over too that one okay I'm not crazy about this one but with these flowers on top it would be cool plus there's another side that one and that one the colors are gorgeous I'll just tell you what they are while I flip these all over they are berry burst blackberry bliss flurry flamingo highland heather lemon lime twist lemon lolly melon mambo mossy meadow old olive petal pink pumpkin pie and real red so all bright beautiful colors so the reverse of papers is always usually just more of a plain pattern which is nice for card making too. So I'm gonna use a little bit of all of this to make some cards to show you. Oh, look at that purple, beautiful. So I'm gonna start with I'm using another new online stamping, a stamp set called Sweetly Scripted. It's very pretty. It's got these long sort of scripty readings and so I'm gonna use those. I've got here a bunch of the ink pads that I mentioned that are in the papers so old olive highland heather blackberry bliss melon mambo flirty flamingo and berry flirty flamingo flamingo and berry burst so i'm gonna use all those and these are all just pieces when you cut your white cardstock and you're cutting off bits and pieces these are all pieces from that so some of them are half an inch and some of them are three quarters of an inch just depending on how i was cutting the paper so i always save these for using greetings so i'm going to stamp up a bunch of greetings so that we have them ready to go for our cards. So I'm using, these are block I. Now, of course, you don't have, need to have multiple blocks. You can just have one block and you can just switch out the greeting every time. So it's just a simple matter of laying the stamps on here. If it's photopolymer, I usually do it like this because photopolymer have a tendency to bend and then pick it up like this. I leave it laying it out, it'll kind of relax into its natural form so I'm just going to do that one just to make sure it's straight and that one looks pretty good okay so let me stamp a couple of these Okay, I'm going to start making cards now and I need to start with cutting the card base. So I'm going to do this one as Old Olive because that is one of the colors in the paper. So that is an 8.5 by 11 cut at 5.5 and, and then to cut the mat for this I'm doing 5 and a quarter by 4. And while I'm at it I'll cut two mats. There's one that we're going to use for this card and one we'll use for another card. So if you don't know how to cut paper be sure to subscribe to my newsletter. I'll put the the information up there because um, in my newsletter there is a guide on how to cut cardstock. Okay so I need that and then I'm going to start with this beautiful piece of cardstock. So it naturally lends itself right to turning into cards because it's got like this panel here and I can cut these off into sections because I don't want to waste a single piece of this because even the back side is nice on this. So three and three quarters and I'm going to cut all of them at the same time. So I'm only going to make one card but you can see that I could actually make six out of this immediately using the exact same design. 
Okay, so right away I have a nice strip left of that or that I can use, so I'm going to put that aside. And then I'm going to cut these at five inches, like this. Okay, so I'm going to want this piece cut at five inches, but I want some white showing. So I'm going to cut each of these at six inches because it's a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So now I've got a bunch of white showing up there and it's maybe just a little bit too much. So I'm going to just cut a little bit off and I can still use those little pieces if I want. And I'm going to turn this around and then cut it at five. Okay, so again, little pieces that I can use and I'll do the same with this one. So now I have pieces for six different cards. So I just need one. So I'm going to start by building the card base in half. And then I'm going to attach this pretty piece to the melon mambo mat. Now with paper that's as pretty as this, it is the star of the show. And you don't want to really add a whole lot more to it. So I'm going to add my happy anniversary that I stamped already. And I'm going to add just some of these mini dimensionals. I'm going to pull out my take a pick tool. And just grab some of these. Um, right under this side. I'm not going to do all the cards like this. I'm going to end up I'll keep losing that one. It's not sticky. Um, I will speed up the video to do the rest of these, but I will make sure to give you all the measurements because there's a bunch of cards I want to do. There's so many different designs I can picture with this. So I've just picked the back off that and I'm just going to lay that on here like so. Okay, so then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to trim off this extra. And of course I can leave that for another greeting. Okay, and now this is going to go in here. Now if I put tape on the back of this, I can, but it's going to be a little squishy in that one area. I'll just be careful. The other thing you can always do is you can put tape just on the inside here. Okay, so that's, that's like tons of tape now. Okay, so I'm going to stick this on here. Beautiful and easy card. Now, of course, we're going to add a little something to it. That would be some bling. And this is um, also part of the online exclusives. They're called Adhesive Back Shiny Sequins. And the colors, I didn't write them down, but they all match here. So whatever you use is going to match. So let me just grab this take a pick tool and, and we'll add some pretty gems. This is definitely the lemon line twist and they're big and they're little too. So just a little bit of extra bling on there. And that is my first card. Just want to make one more version of this card to show you. And the piece I'm going to use for this next design is this large zinnia on here and I'm going to cut this at three inches and because it's 12 by 12 I'll get four of these for this design okay and then I want to cut it at five and a half and same with this one I want to cut five and a half. I just had some scrap here by three and a quarter. And then I've got some basic white I'm using as my cart. Now 
for then this next card, I'm using the exact same measurements as the first one, and that is five by three and three quarters. So you're going to see me cut two different designs with this measurement. And again, I'm cutting um, as many as I can at a time, just because so, then I can easily do three cards like you saw me in the last one. And you saw here when I'm cutting this um, measurement at five and a quarter by four, that I get one of those beautiful little scraps that I save. Okay, so for this card design, again, I'm going to do two at once. And this one really lends itself to that because I'm going to cut this piece in half. So I'm going to place the one corner up at the, uh, the one tip right up here and the other tip right down there. I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to make sure it didn't move, which it did. You can see right through your cutter. You can see that tip and that tip and then slice in half. Okay, I'm going to do the same with this one. It's probably easier to close the cutter and do it like this. I can see the tip in there and the tip in there. Well, it looks like I didn't cut that one quite right, so I'm just going to pull it off. Just need another little trim. I think it's a little bit off that end. I must have just missed it by a second. Yeah, by, by a little, not even an eighth of an inch. And now I've got a little repair here. You won't be able to tell when I'm done though. That's better. Okay, got that extra tape on that one. There we go, that's better. Okay. I made a bit of a tighter border here. I meant to put them right up against each other, but I kind of like it like that. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So this Melon Mambo piece, I want it to go on the white. Let's just make sure that one lines up okay. Okay, and then this one's probably too big too. I must have just made a mistake when I was cutting it. Ah, I know what it is. I flipped it over. So that's fine. We can either leave it like this or I can adjust it. Um, it's just, oh, you know, here we go. <laughs> there we go. Flip it over the right way. This one seems to be fine for some reason. Okay, so on my original, I actually made an adaptation here. So I'm going to do it on this one too. And that is I'm going to cut off um, half an inch, um, a quarter of an inch of each of those. So on this side, so I'm going to do, uh, well, let's go a half an inch. So it's significantly different than the other one. So and half an inch. Okay. If you cut them both at the same angle when you're cutting them, then you will not have a problem matching them up like this. It was just, I had flipped that piece of paper over. Okay, so now you can see this one is significantly smaller. So I can make these opposite if I want, or I could actually flip them around too, so that they're similar. So we've got a much bigger gap here. Now I could decide to close that. I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to make those ones go right up in the corner. You're going to see a significant gap with those two. Okay, and then I'm going to lay this one down right over top there. And I'm going to leave it flat, and I'll show you why in a minute. Oops. Okay. You can see how this looks right up flush. Make it go across like this and again flat and I'll show you why in a second. So one of the pieces I haven't used yet is this beautiful one with all these um, zinnias on them. And what I'm going to do, I've actually got another piece that I've already started here. Put this out here so you can see I've already got a bunch of these and I've cut them out with my scissors. And they're absolutely beautiful. And they're easy to cut out. I'm going to cut one here with you. So you can see, let's cut 
this one right here. Uh, let's see here. Let's do this purple one here. So the first thing you want to do when you're ever you're cutting anything out with a big piece of paper is to cut it smaller. It's easier to work with in a smaller, smaller um, piece. <laughs> Okay, so, and then what you want to do is you want to just take your paper snips. If you can, leave a little bit of a border around there. It looks really nice. And uh, just get in there and turn the paper as you're cutting. Like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just a little bit of those bumps in there. Let me get a little bit more in there. And you can cut the leaves off if you want, or you can leave them on there. I think they look nice on. And it's pretty simple to quickly do a cutout. This is what we used to do before we had dies for everything. And we still do it sometimes when there's no dies. Okay, so there's a beautiful flower. So let me pick two here. Because I've got that lemon lime twist paper in the background, I decided to pick two that had lemon lime twist in their leaves. And because this one here has a nice big gap here, I decided to use one that would really kind of flow over that. Um, and I'm going to stick with the lemon lime twist, seeing as that's the paper in the background. So there we go, there's my third design in several different ways. Okay, so I've taken one of these strips here that I didn't completely cut um, before, so I'm going to actually cut this now at two and three quarters. Cut this at three. Two of those. I'm also going to take this piece that I don't truly love, so I'm going to flip it over to this side, and I'm going to cut again two and three quarters, and then one and three quarters. Again, I'll cut two just so I can make two cards. So this design I've kind of got going on up here, and um, then with this paper here, because these diagonals are going this way, I want to make sure that my lower piece is also the same. And I believe it is one by three inches. But hold on, we may adjust that. We'll see. Okay, so these diagonals will be going the same way. So that will match that from all of our other cuttings. So um, I can use these little scraps now. So I need this to be uh, one inch again which it isn't quite. Is this one one inch? Yes. That's good. One inch, and then this was one and three quarters. So the difference on these two is I've used, this was, um, two and three quarters inch, two and three quarters inch by three. And this is one and three quarters. And this one I took to two inches um, and two inches. So there's less of a gap. There's more of a gap on that one. So whatever kind of gapping you like, you can do. But you can see it's exactly the same design, just using bits of the scraps. And um, yeah, so we'll continue on making the card. this last card what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of these scraps and cut them down into a similar size and make a card with those. So I've got a piece of white here at five by three and three quarters so it would fit on the card base like that. And I've kind of laid out a few scraps and I'm just going to go for it and um, put them down. Oops, take this right out. Okay, grab another one. You could put them on an angle if you want to. I think I'm going to put them straight. Um, when you're doing something like this, you really should um, do the outside first. So I got two fatter ones on the outside and then do the inside because then you can kind of space them. 
So we've got a green one there, so I want to move that one away. So those actually look like they'll space quite nicely. So this was one inch, and these are looks like three quarters. This one might be a little less than three quarters. I'm just putting tape down there. I mean, you can do any sort of fun things with your scraps. Um, use this one. And then I'll put this little tiny one in the middle. And then I'll cut these off. And then, of course, I'll be able to use this one at least again. Another way to do it so you don't get tape on it, like what I've got here, is you could put um, the tape on the white piece instead. So that would be something. Okay, so let's uh, figure out how this is going to finish. Um, I want a nice dark flower like this one to match the background. So maybe we'll grab our nice dark greeting as well. And I want to cover up this piece more than anything because it's not my favorite. Um, so I think, let's see. Something like that might work with the happy birthday just a little bit over more to the left. So I'll do that. Trim it off. Oh, how about I make sure it's straight first? Oh, I must have missed getting some tape there. A little more to the left. And trim that off. Here. That's pretty already. I like it. I did not cut that, fold that card base very evenly. Let's try and do that again, too. Okay. And then we're going to put this flower on here, sort of like that. Yeah, that works. And I have another one that I did here that I'll show you too. And then I'll bring them all out. I've got the scraps all sticking to my arms now. Um, so it's like that. Okay, and of course we're going to add bling to that. Let's see here. Let's pick up some of the pink color, I think. And one more big one down here. That looks great. Okay, so let me show you another one that I have. I'll just out of the way. There's another one. I did a similar idea. Um, this one was on pink and it looks like these scraps are all different sizes. This one is one of the patterns I didn't use. This one here, which is just the, um, the piece from that first card that I did. So it's actually quite nice and you can bring in the lemon lime twist to match that. So two different versions of that. Okay, so first I had this basic one with just that one sheet that was easy to divide and we just put the greetings two different ways. And then I had this one where we had just the sort of strip down the middle. And then we had this one which was the diagonal one. And then we had this one that was the um, little pattern. And then finally we had what we did with the scraps. There's five different designs, two different versions of doing each of those. Not even half a pack of paper and I have ten cards here and I have, I can probably make at least at least another 10 with that other half pack of paper that I have. And then there's another whole pack. If anything, this is what you might need more of, the bling. But just with the pack of paper and that one greeting set, I've made all those cards. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I should see you again next week, hopefully live. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.